Thank you, Manuel, for these nice words. <coughs> Means uh, I am pleased to have the opportunity to present you what is the status of fusion as a potential energy source. That's why the title is a little bit complex, but I am sure you discover there what will be the, the meaning of the different terms. So first one is to assume a worthless dream, which is people which are against are just making use of that. And uh, my, the second point, ITER, would be something important to convey you that the way, because ITER means in, in Latin, it's just the way, the way to the success to make it a possibility as a potential energy source. And this subject is close to my heart. I, I started, as Manuel said, in uh, plasma physics when I was very young to work on, on fundamental physics, but having in mind that it will be applied to something which will be useful for mankind. Because nuclear fusion is the source of energy for the universe, except gravity, you cannot use. The only one is nuclear fusion. Why nuclear fusion being present for the universe as, as a, the unique, almost unique energy source, why human will not be able to use it for its benefits? I think it will a kind of contradiction of human arrogance to say we rule the world. We rule the world and, okay. That's why I will try to, to give some, some strategic view to show that this is really the possibility we'll have to wait a little bit, uh, 10, 20 years to, to get this answer. But the answer will be positive. Okay, I am sorry if sometime I become technical I, I am sure I will read in your face that this is wrong and I will just escape. That's why I have more documents than what is needed for my demonstration and don't hesitate to, to nod with your face and I will follow that. Okay. This is, you see, what I try to, to explain in detail, which is the concept of development, the physics mechanism which limits the, the plasma confinement, the turbulent transport, and why we do ITER after these results available. And this is a, a kind, a small description, small technical description of ITER. Okay. The first, what I put here was exactly the start. Is that a dream? Well, an answer is present. Very okay, this is uh, fusion energy has been just over a decade, at least in the, in the US way of speaking of programs. And uh, it has failed to deliver, okay? And my main answer to you, and I hope you will remember that, is just false. This is wrong. And this is wrong, and you can see what we have said all the time, is this is a long-term project. <coughs> we have learned, and scientific progress has been impressive, and the potential for energy generation is real now. That's why it means the, the, the ITER, this is the paradigm of the, uh, this is a view of the, of the system which is uh, being built. Uh, I, you recognize the small man here, which is a Swiss and could be something you see average, but huge, 30 meter, 35 meter in X. Okay, just to get a sense, the progress. The progress is measured always by a product, a product of three terms, which is the temperature of the plasma and the density times the confinement time. Confinement time is the, the, the constant in time which will happen to be seen by losses when you don't do anything on the plasma. It will energy, <coughs> The, the total energy will decrease with the time constant, which is what we call the confinement time. And which is, I will show you the, the product of these three terms, that multiplied by that, is a measure of the progress. And you can see the, the concept was developed in 1960, and after that, you, you see the progress has been just by generation. And if you are not satisfied by this, uh, this uh, view, Another one, which is even better and much less known, is you put the, this, the triple product, sorry, 
you put the triple product along line, along the, the time, and you put that in, this is a log logarithmic scale, and you compare that to the number of transistors in uh, the Moore's law. And you see the Moore's law is a little bit, a slope a little bit smaller than the fusion. Showing that, you cannot claim that it does never deliver, because in reality the progress has been constant and along, along this line. <coughs> Another view, this is, do we need strategically, do we need a, a, a fusion? And I think I just take one example, which is China. China between 95 and 2020 will have to increase by a factor of four its energy consumption, factor four. But if you look at the amount of coal which will be used, whatever they, they do, I mean, building the three dam, the three gorge dam, putting nuclear energy, as we know, at the end, the, the consumption of coal at the end will increase by far. And that, the, the <coughs> to have an energy source with no greenhouse effect, are clearly needed. If we want to stabilize atmospheric concentration of CO2, you cannot avoid having India, coal, <coughs> China, Brazil, and so on, starting to, to really consume and become a consumer of the, the size we know, this is this result. If you do nothing, we are in trouble. That's why I, I'm just saying that if we have to supply <laughs> energy to satisfy large localized demand, large cities need localized demand. You cannot do that with a, a distributed power. <coughs> Beside burning coal with the total sequestration of CO2, which is not proven and not, uh, not paid for, fusion reactor in concurrence and competition with a possible new scheme of nuclear fission must progressively replace conventional power station. And I say before the end of the century. This is at this level we have to look for an energy supply which is really <coughs> available. If we look to the uh, appealing uh, features from the <coughs> nuclear fusion, you see, besides the, the, the fact that the fuel are, are available for almost for free uh, for a period of time which is unknown <coughs> in front of us, and the, the safety conditions which are taken care here, you see, are such the inventory, a fuel inventory, which is a burning plasma, is one gram. And it is consumed in something like uh, uh, 10 minutes. Different from the storage, storage of uh, the consumption of four or five years in a, in a fission reactor, for example. That gives you a, a view, if really it's working, this is, <coughs> this is very appealing. And again, this found why we are developing nuclear fusion, just because of these uh, appealing factors. Okay, I will just use a little bit more understanding, which is written in, in red here, to, to try to make sure that we measure the difficulties and we measure what, what it is. Okay, not very long. This is, in, in, in the sun, you burn 600 megaton per second of hydrogen, to get to get helium, and you get something like uh, for every reaction you get this amount of 20, 27. On Earth you cannot use hydrogen; you have to use isotope of hydrogen to make the, the rate of reaction large enough. And this is deuterium tritium, which you give to helium and neutron, and you see the, <coughs> the, the the inverse of the mass is such that there are four more four times more energy in the neutron than in the helium. The tritium is just an, a catalyzer because you can, having a, a neutron left without energy, you can fuse with lithium to get, again, the tritium you need. That was the tritium is a, a catalyzer in this system. What you burn is deuterium and lithium, which is available for forever. This is that which is the basis of the reaction. And on Earth, this is that we will use. There are some difficulties because of tritium, okay? Tritium is a, a radioactive material. It has some, all the property of hydrogen, but more <coughs> activity. And the concept of using uh, 
this process has been always to consider the three terms for which we, we know that this is the product which is important, to, to have enough temperature to have the Coulomb barrier between these two charged particles to be over, overcome, <coughs> to have enough density to get power, which is uh, the square of the density, <coughs> to get enough, enough reaction, and the confinement time, which are a, a measure of the losses. If you have the losses are too large, you will never get this large temperature you need. And two concepts have been used, all looked for establishing this time, which is magnetic confinement and inertial confinement. Inertial means you just use the fact that you heat it up and you let it diffuse, which is just a, a dynamic constant and not really the confinement of a, on, a, on a basis of stationary basis. The first one, magnetic, is looking for stationary power supply, and it is much more advanced than the other one, which is uh, using a pulse, mostly for stim simulation of uh, experiment in defense. Okay, just a little bit, this is easier. You can, you can see that the, the, you can write that the, the energy produced, the power produced by the, 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 the collision between deuterium and tritium at enough temperature is larger than the loss. The loss, you have <coughs> the density of uh, electron is the same as the density of, of the reacting particle. That's why you have three times and not three, three halves. Okay, this is losses, and this is the power you, you get. If you try just to express that by just looking at, you see this triple product has to be larger than something, and the minimum is given for a temperature, you cannot see, the temperature should be 1.5, 10 to the 8 Kelvin. It means 150 millions of Kelvin, degree Kelvin. Okay, that, the concept is, is just a, a, a scheme you have to a, a plasma which provides the, the, <coughs> the helium-4 and neutron. Neutron goes to the boundary. It's, it's, it's cooled. The boundary is cooled by a heat exchanger with water, for example, and you get energy. And you have to fill with deuterium and tritium and remove the, the tritium to circulate again. This is a concept of the thermal machine, nothing else. Sorry. If you go to the, to the pulse one, this is very, very short pulse. And uh, this is a, a pellet, one millimeter in diameter, for example, full of deuterium and, and tritium, either in liquid form or in solid form. And you, you build a very large power on it by sh shining either a laser light, laser light, which can, this is indirect drive, you see, because you use the fact that this is a cavity which is filled with, the, with the, the, <coughs> the radiation. And here, this is again the same radiation, but put in many, many, many numbers of channels, something like 200, 250, to have a uniform. Because as soon as you don't get uniform, you get deform and, and, and Kelvin and, uh, and mode uh, instability. This time, it's very different. Instead of having a density which was in the first case, something 10 to the 20 per cubic meter, which is void. Here you have the density should be 1,000 times the density of solid, very, very high. In the first case, the pressure was around one bar at 150 million, but one bar. Here, this is megabar. And this is very different. I mean, the process of the burning is not something which is continuous. It's the fact that you heat up the center and there is a wave of heat which is propag propagated, having the, 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 the nuclear energy deliver at the same time but <coughs> to, to really get high temperature. Again, now this is, you have to look not to the power <coughs> relation, but to, to, the, to the energy. You, you have to put energy to compress the system, and you, you recover energy by fusion reactor, by fusion reaction. But it has to be large enough to compensate for the very low efficiency of the driver. And that's why you need 50 to 100 times. And again, this triple product has to be the minimum, and the minimum is obtained for 
three times 10 to the, to the eight, a, a factor two. But the, the level of development of these two process are very different. One is such that we, we look for a stationary system. The other one is looking for experiments which are, are useful for simulation of a bomb. <coughs> That's why it means my belief is the first one will be available much, much sooner than the second, if any. OK, just, just a few items to show that on which basis we, we use the, fa the, the confinement is if you have a toroidal magnetic field, just like that, toroidal given by coils, which are distributed periodically, if you put one particle in it, in void, this particle will never be confined unless you add a magnetic field which has a component transverse, which makes that the, the magnetic lines goes, you see, at the same time they turn around, but they, are, they turn around the small radius. As soon as we produce this rotational transform, as we say, <coughs> you get confinement of one particle forever. Which is very important. I mean, the confinement is coming from that point. As soon as you, make, you put many of them, they interact. And interacting with each other, you get some loss. And the loss drives the, the particles across the magnetic field to the boundary. And you lose them. This is, OK, there are three, three periods. You can, <coughs> you can see that on the drawing. OK, that's why if you put a lot of particles and try to confine all of them at the same time, you need to build a, a configuration, which is the ITER configuration. This is the magnetic lines are describing a surface. And these surfaces are nested in each other. That's why you have an axis which is displaced, I mean, it depends on the pressure. And you have magnetic lines which goes around and around in, a, uh, in surface. And there are, this is given by the, 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 the current going into these coils and the current that goes inside the plasma, which is a, a necessity to provide this rotational transform. And here, which is important, is to see that there is always a separatrix. And there are two separatrix, one here and one here. They are not at the same on the same magnetic surface, but that was a particle which go across the magnetic field and diffuse to the boundary. Instead of going everywhere, you can drive them along the field line to be received here at the boundary. This process is called a diverter, and this is a must to control the, the interaction with the boundary. Here you get a lot of power, but you know where you are. This is, you have to remove something which is in the range of 10 megawatt per square meter. It's a very large value. But you know that this is here, and you can control the impurity level which will come uh, through that system. OK? So good. You know that one particle is confined the, when you put many. And the many in, in, the, in this concept is something you have to figure out, is the density and the temperature are so high that the mean free pass of each particle is much larger than the, the dimension you are using. That means all particles are there, and they're all as individuals. They don't interact by collision, as we know, in, in, a, in, a, in a, at room temperature in a, a hydrodynamic. It's the fact that every particle is interacting with all the others through the electromagnetic wave. This is that. This is a very curious material where there is a pressure, there is a temperature, but this is every particle interact with all the others in the system by the electromagnetic wave. OK, limit to this plasma confinement. You know that you can confine, but what are the limits? And there are two kinds of limits. The one is the macroscopic equilibrium, which depends on the the gradient of the current density and the gradient of the pressure. It is a kind of universal limit. And that you can cope with by controlling the magnetic uh, configuration exactly in detail. That's why this one has limits, but limits we understand if we can work on that. And this is similar, similar to what happened in, a, in, a, in magneto, magnetosphere on the accretion disk in, uh, 
uh, in the, the cosmology <coughs> system. What is more important than this one is the transport phenomena. I was saying that every particle reacts with all the others through electromagnetic waves. And this is this fact which produces a turbulence at very small scale. After you have solved the, the, the main macroscopic equilibrium, what you get is a lot of waves, many are in, unstable, and they're nonlinear reaction, nonlinear action. They become, they provide a turbulence at the size of the radius of duration of the ion, which is two millimeters, which, which is of this order. That means, and this turbulence provides a transfer of energy and transfer of particles across the magnetic field, and they go to the boundary. This is the process which is the main limiting factor to the, to the value of the confinement. <coughs> and that is understood. This is complex because you see it depends on the pressure gradient as a universal, but not, not the full pressure. This is the detail of the velocity distribution of particles. That means the waves are in phase with <coughs> some of the particles in some range of velocity. And this is this interaction which drives the turbulence. That's why this is more complex than just a, a wave which will move all the particles together. No, no, they act on a very small range of the velocity distribution of electrons and ions. <coughs> and that is uh, the main limit for that. But sometimes uh, this uh, turbulence is helping you. And it, it gives th that. Here I present, this is uh, the axis of revolution on the axis of the plasma, and this is the radius. Okay, sometimes you get the, dance, the, the pressure goes along this line, and this is fine, and this is present when you limit yourself to injecting not too much power in the plasma. But if you put higher pow power, you have to transfer more <coughs> energy out of the system, and what happens sometimes, and sometimes if you know what parameters you have you use? <coughs> this, this turbulence built itself a barrier. The turbulence itself has limit to drive the particle out and the energy out, and they built a, a gradient which is even larger. It is not a stationary system. That means the gradient exists, it, it put some limit, disappear, and you get a, a bunch of particles going through at the diverter level as a periodic system. But what happens with that is that you get a barrier here, which is fluctuating, you see, but that allows to provide all that in energy, which means the temperature is higher and the performance can be higher. Sometimes this could happen even inside the plasma to build a, an internal transport barrier because of the turbulence level will be too large here. That was, this is on this basis, experimental basis on all experiments, you can see that, and this is on that, that you you use that was ITER is supposed to work on what we call H mode. H mode means high confinement mode, having a, a barrier, edge transport barrier at the boundary. This is that. That could be a benefit in the second order, but we use just this fact here. And that is something you have seen in all experiments. That means if you put what is measured at the confinement time, and the predicted confinement time, the different laws that we're using, you see on three orders, more than three orders of magnitude, you have, <coughs> you have and it, it goes with small experiment, you see on the range of 30 centimeters to something which is meter, and this is, we have to extrapolate by just a factor five in this uh, uh, confinement time, and which is to show that the progress has been there, and we, we understand what are the limits and how we can work on this limit. And that is the basis of the choice. From that, you can be confident that ITER can be built, it can achieve with that. And this is what, what he say. Besides that, we have one experiment with the JET, which is built by the community of the physicists in Europe. And this is in Oxford. It has been built in, around uh, 1980. And this has give, provided <coughs> the largest amount of results now. And it has already produced 16 megawatts of uh, fusion power. 
16 megawatts is not negligible, but it is very small in comparison to the power you inject in the plasma, which is in the range of 50 megawatts. <coughs> okay, the, the divert, oh, bo, 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 bo. Uh, I think I make a mistake. Yes, I could, I could start with that. Okay, the <coughs> jet has produced 16 megawatts. The diverter concept has been working. The plasma heating system at the level of tens of megawatts has been working, and that's why the largest machine like JET and the same in, in Japan are now sim still to simulate the best condition for heater. This is on this basis that we are working. <coughs> that's why the present experiment are able to simulate all, all parameters, but not at the same time. You can look for that, look for that, look for that, but not at the same time, because I think there is one non-linearity you cannot uh, check without doing it, which is the non-linearity which is given by the fact that the, the source of, of power inside the plasma is driven by the by the, the, the density and temperature you get, which is itself given by the diffusion to the rest of the loss. I mean, this is a totally nonlinear system. And being that, you cannot simulate. You can think of that, you can try to make a, but in reality, you have to show, and this is ITER, which will show that, solve this uh, nonlinearity. That's why the, the idea was, okay, on the basis of understanding, basis of experimental result, we will, push to have a burning plasma, which is the heater, and uh, to, to validate and optimize the physics parameters for a possible future electricity generating, which we call a demonstration reactor. And the development of the technology should be developed minimum to get this. And that is looking for the strategic need. You see the jet was, was there from 1980 to, to now, looking for physics basis. ITER will be to confirm the physics basis as a, a physics experiment to demonstrate the minimum technology which are needed for that and assuming that, oh, sorry, <laughs> assuming that the, the demonstration reactor will be, make use of the results and be such that the running cost will be given, <coughs> will be paid by the electricity produced but the capital will be lost. But this is, is that the idea of the demonstration is you produce electricity, but you don't produce in economic terms because the capital is never reimbursed. And, but the next, here you, sh you should solve the economics to, to, a, a, to have a power reactor if, if all conditions are, are agree. This is that the strategic line which have to, to be used, and this is that which is you see this, the basis. Here is a step we understand. And this is a step where you will look for the economics of the system, but produce electricity. Really. Okay, the ITER project was, was launched by a, a meeting of Mr. Gorbachev, Reagan, and Mitterrand in, in 86. It really looks surprising, but it was at the time of Gorbachev was trying to get inside the, the, the occidental way of doing things and ask for a cooperation in this, in this item, assuming that the interest is long term, but the strategy could be the same in all countries, whatever economic conditions are. And this was uh, agreed, it takes some time from, from here, to get a, a conceptual design activity which was working together across borders, but engineering design activity started in 92 for, I think, 2001. And that was to build a team, joint central team, to make the design, home teams from the different the four countries to support the R&D, which is needed to, to make sure you can build something like that, because most of the technology is new on that. And what is important is to recognize that the full output of that will be available to ev everyone, every partner. That means there is no property issue. The intellectual property right disappear, which is by far the, the paradigm of everything we can think 
of in uh, cooperation in international terms. In July 2001, a detailed, complete, and fully integrated design was available. The data necessary for a decision of construction were documented, and the negotiation started. Started to have delays, delays because of the site, the choice of the site. And it took something like uh, three, four years to, to decide on, on site. And after that, and the, the spending for this design activity was something like 660 million of dollars, but 89 values, and something like 2,000 professional year. Okay, objectives of ITER are, are, are <coughs> I could go through that because it has been presented, is to, to produce in an integrated way the feasibility issue. After ITER, you can say, we know how to use fusion. It doesn't mean that you will build the reactor, but you know that you can use it. This is the main principal conclusion which is needed. Parameters is that uh, the fusion power will be in the range of 500 to 700 megawatt. This is, this, this is a lot, it's a, it's a reactor size. <coughs> and that you cannot avoid because of the non-linearity. Either you produce zero or you go to very high value. <laughs> there is an exponential build and you, you cannot escape from that. <coughs> And uh, the current is the plasma, which is by inductive means is uh, 15 megaamps. The plasma, plasma volume is 800 cubic meter, which is very large. And the, the surface is uh, 700 uh, square meter. The power to, to put in the plasma by, by uh, special means, either waves or, or particles, is 73, well, able to go to 100 megawatt. You see, you produce 100 megawatt with a, an efficiency of, say, between 40 and 60 percent. And you have to, to cope with this 500, 700. That means you have to cool. That was, it looked like the reactor at the end. Even if it is a physics experiment, because of the technology which is needed, you are confronted with a lot of energy. OK, that is too complex. Again, this is a, a, a bit uh, difficult to, perhaps to, to identify. You may, but this is a bit uh, confusing. That's why I put a, a cross section. You see th in this cross section, there are big coils which are in white here. There are 18 of these coils which provide the toroidal field which is needed. Toroidal field will be here. A vacuum vessel which uh, makes uh, separate the plasma from the, the boundary. Cover inside by Blankets, which we call blankets, which will absorb the neutrons energy and will be cooled by water. This is 500 megawatt. You will see this megawatt here in the, in the boundary. That. And you see, perhaps, that to have access inside the plasma, to put power in it, to measure, to, you, you have <coughs> nine cuts, like this one, where you have three entrants <coughs> to to go to, to put the power on the instrument, but also to remove items which need the maintenance. And that's why the maintenance has to be done by having different items across, along here, and removing them through the port. But you have to think immediately, these ports have to be absolutely tight. They are welded. And when you go to make some maintenance, you will go with robots. Like, like, like that, you see, you have, you have access at three different levels, and you, you bring what, I, what, what is never, this is complex, I, mean, I, I, no, I don't hope to give you the detail, but what I like, I, I will even skip this one. Okay, to get, to get that, to get to this level, <laughs> when you try to maintain any, any piece inside, you have to do that because of the tritium, because of the radiation level, it has to be done by robots. And this robot, you have to introduce Intel, and you have to introduce bringing these tools in cask, robo robotized. This cask will, will dock here, will cut the weld, will open the door, will have access here, remove, close the door, redo the weld, and move this cask with no radiation protection to a hot cell where you will correct it. Look at this part of the technology, it tells you how difficult it is, but that has been proven. This is not a dream. 
that has been proven experimentally, and uh, I have photograph on that. I did not have time to present that, but this is the way it should be. And that is a nice picture to, to show what it is. Uh, the complexity is remained there, but you see there. The problem of toroidal geometry is the fact that everything has to be brought to the, to the, to the central part. That was the access is uh, difficult, and the only way is to make the level of stresses inside very, very high. All that is superconducting materials. I mean, the whole machine is working at 4, 4K, but the level of stress in all these parts of the coils here, for example, is 700 megapascals, which gives you some understanding why it's, it's complex. Okay, I think there have been seven large projects to show that the development and the availability of this robotic, of these coils, superconducting coils, uh, how to build a, a vacuum vessel and the module and the diverter with an accuracy which is good enough, and, and all the R&D which concerns the safety has been done also. That was, all that was done during these uh, 10 years of uh, development of ITER, and I think the safety here is, has been done at the same time with the design, because this is a way to, to, to really be, be ready, and uh, the advantage of fusion can be seen really at this level, the low fuel inventory, the low power density, the confinement barrier, which came from the different vessel, cryostat, and building itself. And the environmental impact is such that even under hypothetical second, internal events, no technical need for public evacuation, which is really the, 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 the must for an up-to-date uh, safety issue. And that is Okay, that perhaps is too complex. Uh, that was the idea was how to make sure that seven countries across the world, they will not put their money in one budget, impossible. They will build and provide in kind. How to make sure that you can evaluate the different production in, in a way which is satisfactory for everyone. That was something was invented to use a, a, a unit, ITER unit of account, just like the EQ, but apply, apply to ITER. And that was, uh, was working fine. There was no difficulty with that. And uh, I did now, you see the, <coughs> this is the construction is, start, is started for the, the coils, terrific coils, central solenoid, vacuum vessel, and the building. The building is the driver of the timing because you have to make assembly after the building available. And the assembly is such that you get the first plasma in 2000. 19, and you will have the full operation in 2025-26. That was, I came back to my conclusion, <coughs> which is uh, sometimes easy. If I have been able to convince you, you should agree on the first two, two, two bullets. <coughs> you have to register the fact that the seven largest countries in the world, 85% of the total population, have been agreeing on this strategy and saying, okay, we, we do, we work together on this strategy and we pursue the development through international cooperation, which is a very, very important issue, which was agreed in 2001, and after that, the difficulty of the, of the system. The negotiation are inside. The, the site has been chosen after difficulties to be at Cadarache in France, where Manuel saying it was prepared in 78, prepared for, for, for that. <coughs> and uh, the construction has started on site, and the international team in charge is fully operational. The domestic agency in each partner uh, are putting first order outside. That was my, my conclusion, which I hope you will agree with, is it is safe to say that nuclear fusion is alive and well, the contrary of the first sentence, where I put, uh, and the potential for energy generation is real. And I continue to say that strongly. You may have full confidence that the potential is true. We don't guarantee that we will succeed completely, but you know that the ITER will, will work, will provide more or less performant results, and depending on this performance and the, the economic conditions of everything else, if we don't care of the, of the 
CO2 in the atmosphere, okay, you can continue to, to, to burn uh, coal, uh, that there are plenty of reserves for that. But if we like to, to stop that, you better look in detail to the results which should be available. Thank you very much for your attention.